The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents A Point of Law, starring McDonald Carey and Mr. Harry Davenport. Cesar Romero is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. The other day we happened to be talking about traditions. You know, the customs, practices, and opinions, the way people look at things. And we got to discussing family theater as a program expressing our traditional, our American way of thinking. Yes, when you come right down to it, faith in God is, well, it's an essential part of the whole spirit of America. It's written in our Declaration of Independence. You'll find it in the presidential messages from Washington down. It's part of our heritage of life and liberty and happiness. Yes, and part of our heritage of tolerance and trust in our fellow men. It's the spirit upon which our nation was founded and developed. And today you and I, so many millions of us, can express our trust in God our thanks to God by simply lifting our minds and hearts in prayer. And when families pray, when parents and children gather together and lift their simple words to him who is the father of us all, there is happiness and peace and God's wonderful contentment in a home. That's why Family Theater is dedicated to your home, dedicated with the hope that in all homes of America, in all the homes of the world, there will be peaceful, prayerful, and happy families. Larry Bledsoe is the owner of the Rafter B Ranch, homesteaded by his father back in the early 1900s. It's not a large spread measured by Western standards. Three weeks ago, a wildcat oil well 12 miles from the Rafter B south line blew in unexpectedly for 3,000 barrels a day. Since then, a boom town has come into existence, and the lease hounds have been as busy as a stump full of ants, tying up all the nearby acreage. On this particular day, Larry is sitting on the front gallery of the ranch house, giving instructions to his foreman, Benito Gomez. Tex says he spotted a dozen or so strays in that box canyon on the north range when he came over the rim rock last night. You better take him and Slade and chase him back to the main herd. Si, senor Larry. Mira, look at this car which has just turned in from the road. So big, so pretty. Yeah, shines like a brand new silver dollar in a mud hole. That car don't belong here of us. I wonder whose it is and what he wants. Quien sabe. I go now, Senor Larry. Hasta la vista. See you tonight, Benito. Bye, con Dios. Beg your pardon? Are you Lawrence Bledsoe? No. Hmm? Oh, wait a minute. Yes. I haven't called Larry so long. I blame near forgot the handle they baptized me with was Lawrence. A light and set, won't you? Thanks. My name's Kendrick, Mr. Bledsoe. T. Paul Kendrick. I'm proud to meet you, Mr. Kendrick. Set. Thank you. Can I get you cold No, drink? no, no, not right now, thank you. Well, nice layout you have here, Bledsoe. Well, thank you, Mr. Kendrick. I like it. If it's a fair question, does it uh, net you a reasonable return on your investment? Well, as to that, I can't rightly say. Hmm? One way you look at it, I don't have an investment. You see, I fell heir to the raft of B when typhoid took my mother and dad the same day, so it don't actually stand me a red copper. Oh. As to return, well, we... Managed to get by. But you're hardly getting rich. <laughs> Great day in the morning, I should say I ain't. I got a wife and some kids. When the price of beef is up, we lay away a few dollars. When it's down, we spend it. Mm hmm Well, how would you like to be rich? Go on. Keep talking. I'm a man of few words, Bledsoe. You've heard of the Wildcat Well the Intercontinental Oil Company brought in three weeks ago. Man, it'd have to be deep not to heard about it. All right, that's my business too. Oil. I want to lease your entire ranch. Not interested. I'll give you $10 an acre cash and one sixteenth royalty of any and all oil we find. No, nope, not interested. Not interested. Man, you don't know what you're talking about. Why, well, it means around $100,000 in cash. And if we strike oil... Sorry, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's derricks. Oil derricks changed in God's skyline to a dirty mess that smells of money. Sorry? Not interested. Why? Why, you're crazy, Bledsoe, to let sentiment stand in the way. Why, if there's oil under your property, you'll be a millionaire, a multimillionaire. You can travel Florida in the winter to the Canadian Northwoods in the summer. You can go to Europe. I've you been can... to Europe. 
Did with the 36th Division. Thanks, but this suits me right here. Mm hmm Well, you're a harder man to deal with than I anticipated, Bledsoe. All right. I'll make it $20 an acre. Still not interested. That's as high as I'll go, Bledsoe. Use your imagination, man. Picture the scene in front of us here. Instead of grass and prairie, there'll be a regular forest of oil derricks, each one pouring out a flood of black gold. And of every dollar's worth that comes out of the ground, six and a quarter cents is yours. How'd you like that? You know, I wouldn't like it worth a hoot. As far as I'm concerned, there ain't money enough in the world to pay for the way those derricks would mess up the landscape. But, but, but you don't understand, Bledsoe, uh... Oil is essential for our country as well, So is beef. It ain't a mighty use, Mr. Kendrick. You know, Will Rogers said it for me. Will said that when they cut up the Texas panhandle and made wheat farms out of it, they ruined the finest cattle grazing land God ever saw fit to bless man. Oh, you I feel the same way about the raft to be. The Lord aimed for it to be cattle land. Leastwise, I, I'm satisfied he did. And cattle land, it's going to stay. I'm not so sure about that. Meaning? I'm a good friend, Bledsoe, but a bad enemy. I want to be a friend. Sorry you're leaving so soon, Mr. Kendrick. And don't forget to close the gate on the way out. All right. I warned you, Bledsoe, when I see something I want, I usually find a way to get it. And I want the rafter B. You want it. But I got it. And what's more, I aim to keep it. You warned me. Now, I'm warning you. If you or any one of your men so much as sets foot on Rafter B land, you'll get a Winchester welcome. <laughs> you needn't worry about that, Bledsoe. I never resort to force when there's so many other means. Means so much more effective. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to leave you with a little reminder. You haven't seen the last of T.P. Kendrick. <laughs> Look, Senor Larry, those men, what are they doing? That's a survey in Crubanita, and they're on Rafter B land. I'm Larry Bledsoe, owner of the Rafter B. Just what are you gents doing on my spread? Oh, now, take it easy, Bledsoe. We're just a bunch of working boys uh, making a day's wages. We go where the man that hires us tells us to, and that's here. Who's the man that hired you? Kendrick, uh, T.P. Kendrick. I figured that's the way it was. What are you surveying? All right now, we're mapping this creek bed. All I'm doing is following orders. Then start following these. Get. Fast. And don't come back. Okay, okay, we're going. But it takes a lot of time to pack this transit. If Kendrick tries to send you back, take my advice and quit. I got nothing again, you armorers, personal. But next time, there won't be any talking. Howdy, Sheriff. Light and set. Whoa, whoa, beauty, whoa. Well, howdy, Larry. I'll just do that. It ain't time already that you're campaigning for re-election, is it, Sheriff? No. No, it ain't time yet, Larry. Most a year to go. Well, maybe you're organizing a posse then, huh? No, no posse, Larry. Son, just what happened twixt you and Kendrick's surveying crew down by Crazy Horse Creek this morning? Oh, nothing much. I ordered them off the raft of B. Told them next time there wouldn't be any talking. Mm -hmm. That matches what Kendricks told me his crew boss said. Larry, I don't like this a little bit, but I got my duty to do. I got to tell you, there ain't a thing you can do to keep Kendrick from putting a crew on your spread and surveying it. Why ain't there? Because Kendrick slapped an injunction on you, restraining you from interfering with his survey of your land. Yeah, but it's my land, Sheriff. Since when did the law say a man ain't got the right to defend his own? I don't make the law, I just enforce it to the best I know how. But Kendrick's been saying around the courthouse that you don't own the Rafter B. I don't own the Rafter B? Well, that's what he's a-claiming. I never did get the straight of it, son, but if I was you, I'd hire me a lawyer. I'll get Amos Slaughter. He was a good friend of my dad's. Yeah, Amos is a good one. And a scrapper. Fight a buzzsaw and turn the handle himself. Oh, and Larry. Yeah? Just to humor an old man, be careful when you go into town, will you? You might bump into this, Kendrick. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, I figured as much. You'd be the first Bledsoe I ever had to take in. 
I'd hate it the worst way, but I'd be duty-bound to do it if you was to tangle with Kendrick. I had a notion you'd be coming to see me, Larry. So I've been studying this law that Kendrick's are tossing you away. But, Amos, there just can't be a law that'll let a man take another man's property away from him when he, he don't owe nothing on it. Well, Larry, laws are like the winds and the rain that the good Lord sends us. They do a lot of good, but sometimes you get caught in a twister. Don't look like they're protecting me and mine. Kendrick and 11 of his men is each filed on a section of my land. That's 12 sections they're trying to grab. Will the law let them do it, Amos? Well, now, it's a complicated state of affairs, Larry. First off, there's a law in the statute books of this state that defines a navigable stream as any water course which averages 60 feet from grass root to grass root for a distance of 20 miles or more from its confluence with a larger body of water, river, lake, gulf, or ocean. Crazy Horse Creek runs smack dab through the raft of B. And according to the law... Crazy Horse Crick's a navigable stream. Now, that's watermelon conversation if I ever hear it, Amos. Why, 11 months out of the 12, that creek ain't got enough water in it to wet a cigarette paper. It's only when the snows are melted up in the mountains in the springtime. Yeah, it don't make no difference, Larry. Legally, it's a navigable stream. Oh. Now, second off, another law in the statute book states that the bed of a navigable stream belongs forever to the state and can't be filed upon for settlement. Now, wait a minute. I, I don't exactly savvy that last, Amos. That's his way, Larry. Supposing you're fixing to file on a section of state land that's open for homesteading. That's uh, 640 acres, right? Right. But supposing a navigable stream runs through that section. According to the law, you can't file on that stream bed. So what do you got to do? You got to survey that stream bed and find out how many acres is in that part that runs through your section. Supposing... Just to use an even number, suppose it's 100 acres. All right. You got to subtract that 100 acres from the original 640. And all you can file on is what's left, which is 540. Well, I still can't see what that's got to do with me. Well, when your pappy came out here 40-odd year ago and filed on his original land, he never made the survey of Crazy Horse Creek that the law requires. Probably never knew about the law. Maybe he didn't have the time nor the money. Whatever the reason was, he filed on the full 640 acres in 12 sections that's crossed by Crazy Horse Creek. Now, Kendrick, some way or other, found this out. Now, he's claiming that your pappies and, uh, hence, your claim to those 12 sections is invalidated and null and void because of an illegal survey. But how come he and his men can file on them? Because if the court decides again, you Larry... When that land reverts back to the state, that means the first man or men that claims it can have it under the homestead laws of the state. Well, all I got to say is it's a sorry state and a sorry country that's got laws that'll let a man steal another man's home and property away from him. Now, Larry, you ain't serious when you say that. Ain't I? I reckon I'm not going to let some land shark take my spread away from me while the law that's supposed to protect me hog ties me. Ain't there another law somewhere that says I got to smile real purty and shake hands with a crook? And maybe serve him a cup of tea while he's sticking his knife in my back? It ain't like you to talk like that, Larry. Besides, Kendrick ain't got the raft to be yet. Not by a darn sight. You said yourself, sometimes things get twisted. Kendrick will hire him a couple of high-powered eastern lawyers and they'll turn us every way but loose. Yeah, will they? You're forgetting something else I said. That laws generally protect the people they was aimed to protect. Of course, now, if you'd feel better with somebody else for counsel... I'm sorry, Amos. What I said was thoughtless. I wouldn't have anybody but you representing me. Well, it's better. I mean, thank you, Larry. Let's lay all the cards face up, Amos. Have we got a chance? I'd be trifling with the truth if I didn't admit we're between a hard spot and a rock. But by grabs, Larry, we'll fight him. And if they beat us, there still won't be anybody hearing us holler, calf rope. There are those same hombres, Senor Larry, with those same, what you call it? Transit. See, transit. Yeah, they are. 
on Rafter B land, working that fool heads off to take it away from me. And there ain't a thing I can do about it. Ah, pobrecito mio. I wish there is something I can do. These transits, Senor Larry, what do these hombres do with it, eh? Yeah, they measure distances with it. Leastways, that's what somebody told me once. So if they do not have these transit, they will not be able to steal the Rafter B from you? I reckon it's something like that. Hey, put down that gun! See if now you can fix those transits with Benito as a shooter. You're hungry, you! Benito, you ain't got the good sense of a Bessie bug. But <laughs> I'm turned if you ain't a man that I'm proud to call my friend. Howdy, Sheriff. Light and set. No, no, thank you, Larry. Whoa, there, beauty. Whoa. Well, howdy, Benito. Buenos dias, senor sheriff. Sure you won't light and set, Sheriff? No, no, I ain't got the time, Larry. Reckon you know why I'm here. Reckon I do. Son, what in the kid here ever got into you to do such a thing as shooting that transit of Kendrick's? Senor Larry, he, he does not he shoot those transits, Senor Sheriff. It is I, Benito Gomez, which do Don't it. pay him no mind, Sheriff. What's it likely to be? Jailhouse, or can I put a bail? I'm afraid it's the jailhouse. Oh, no, Senor Larry. It is Benito which belong in the calabozo. It is Benito which is shoot... Keep still, Benito. Reckon you better handcuff me, Sheriff? You're the boss man here now, Benito. Don't let Kendrick steal the raft of B while I'm gone. I'm saving that for the law to do. Well, tomorrow's the big day, Amos. Anything new? I've been working like a pup dog turning a churn, Larry. Judge Benton Claypool's appointed to try your case. You figure we got a chance with Claypool? He's an old-timer and square as they make him. He'll lean over backwards to give both sides a fair shake. But you're still whistling in the dark when you go past the barren ground, ain't you, Amos? Larry Bledsoe, I'm telling you, if I hadn't been a friend to your pappy, I'd have give up this case a long time ago. But why, Amos? Because you're a quarter wit, a darn idiot. That ain't done a thing but throw rocks in my path since the first day I talked with you. Amos, what do you mean? What'd you do? You begun talking like a darn lame brain, that's what you done. That's a fine state. This is a fine country. Some reason or other, the people in this country has got the idea that if there's a better country than these United States of America, they failed so far to hear about it. Harry, boy, there's been something sadly lacking in you. You better get down and do a little thinking. And a little praying wouldn't hurt you either. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This honorable court is now in session. This Winton's a sharp lawyer, Larry. Don't let him get you tangled up. I ain't worried none, Amos. Not after last night. <clears throat> Your Honor... It is not in any way, shape, or form the intent of my client to impose the slightest hardship upon the defendant, Lawrence Bledsoe. In fact, even after my client had discovered that the defendant is not legally the owner of the ranch known as the Rafter B... Object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Mr. Winton, you'll please bear in mind that this court will decide the question whether or not Lawrence Bledsoe's title to the ranch known as Rafter B is a legal one. I beg the court's pardon. I meant no offense. <clears throat> Mr. Bledsoe, how much did my client offer you as a lease of the mineral rights upon your ranch? Ten dollars an acre cash and a one-sixteenth royalty on any and all oil. Was that his final offer? No, sir. He raised it to twenty dollars an acre cash. Twenty dollars an acre cash and one-sixteenth royalty on any and all oil discovered. A handsome offer. I should be inclined to say a most handsome offer. I object, Your Honor, to that last observation. The amount offered my client does not enter into this case. Whatever it was, it was his right and privilege to refuse it. Objections sustained. Strike the counsel for the plaintiff's last two observations from the record. 
Counsel will confine himself to his cross-examination of the defendant. I apologize, Your Honor. What was your answer, Mr. Bledsoe, to my client when he made you this handsome offer? The clerk will strike that word handsome from the last sentence. Counsel for the plaintiff will be more careful in his use of adjectives. I stand rebuked, Your Honor. I shall rephrase my question. What was your answer, Mr. Bledsoe, to my client when he made you this offer? I told him I wasn't interested. And did you then not threaten him with some such remark as, if you or any of your men set foot on the rafter B, you'll get a Winchester welcome? Yes, but that was... Please answer my question, yes or no. Yes. And what did you mean by a Winchester welcome, Mr. Bledsoe? Am I to infer it meant a welcome with a Winchester rifle? It meant I'd shoot him or any polecat that was working for him that trespassed on my land. Uh-huh. That is what I thought it meant. But I didn't say it till after Kendrick had threatened me. Threatened you? Just what form did this threat of my clients take? He said he was a good friend, but a bad enemy. And did he say he intended to become your enemy? No, sir. He said he'd like to be my friend. But it was the way he said it. What he meant was, he'd be my enemy. I'm sure you misinterpreted my client's meaning, Mr. Bledsoe. Unintentionally, of course. Your Honor, we have proved every point we sought to make. We have proved that the defendant's father, either through carelessness or laziness or a willful flouting of the laws of this state, failed to make a proper or legal survey of the lands he claimed under homestead law. We have proved that Mr. Bledsoe refused my client's offer in no uncertain terms and even threatened his life. It was only then, Your Honor, that my client undertook the action which has been brought before you for decision. My client regretted and regrets the necessity which has compelled him to take such measures against a citizen and a former member of our armed forces. Yet my client appreciates that whatever oil may lie buried deep beneath the surface of these lands should be exploited for the benefit of this great nation. I may add, Your Honor, that the defendant, by recent remarks which many have heard, does not seem to have that same regard for this... I object, Your Honor. This court will remain in order or the sheriff will be instructed to clear it. Objection sustained. Strike that last sentence of the counsel for the plaintiff off the record. Your Honor, may I say a few words? I see no reason why this court should not grant your request, Mr. Bledsoe. Thank you, sir. First off, what Mr. Winton was starting to say when Amos, I mean Mr. Slaughter, objected was right. I've been saying some fool things against this state and against our country. I was wrong, and I apologize. This public repudiation of former statements is very touching, Your Honor, but Quiet, I... Mr. Winton. Go ahead, Mr. Bledsoe. Thank you, sir came to me last night how wrong I was, Your Honor. Nights are long when you're lying on a bunk in a jailhouse cell. I got to thinking about my dad, thinking how he never could have done what he did in any other country but the United States. You knew him, didn't you, Judge Claypool? I object to the question as irrelevant, Your Honor, and as an attempt to impeach Your Honor's integrity. I think I'm the best judge of my integrity, Mr. Winton. Objection overruled. Yes, I knew your father well, Mr. Bledsoe. I was satisfied you did, sir. Well, last night it seemed like I could see him the way he was when he first came out to this new country. Young and strong, fresh from a long hitch in the army in the Philippines. Alabama didn't look good to him then. The land was old, and the weevils was eating up the cotton faster than the farmers could plant it. He wanted something else. Room to breathe in. Land he could work, so so that it'd be worth something to himself and the generations to come. A spread of his own where he could build a home. Your Honor, I object on the ground. Objection that... overruled. Go on, Larry. Thank you, sir. When Dad first came out to this country, Judge Claypool, all he had to his name was the clothes on his back, a chopping axe, cast iron skillet, and not much more than enough money to homestead the first section of the raft to be. But he worked for that land. And when he had to, he fought for it. He fought droughts and hail, and floods, and windstorms. He tried to do the right thing. He had his land surveyed like the law required, or at least like everybody thought it required, but like a lot of folks around here, he hadn't even heard about what a dried-up navigable stream was. He was too busy carving a home out of the wilderness so he'd have something to leave to them that came after him, which happened to be me. 
I was born on the raft to be. I got me a wife and five kids. I'm educating them kids. I got a stake in my family and I, I got a stake in that land. It's mine, Judge Claypool, mine. Maybe this navigable stream laws are good and maybe the state needs it on its statute books. I don't know. Your Honor, I strongly object, object to the line Objection overruled. And that is your final one, Mr. Winton. <clears throat> this court acknowledges that there might be a slight question of the legality of the defendant's title to the lands in question. But this court also recognizes the long years of possession of this property, which the defendant and his father before him have enjoyed. This court will not set a precedent by depriving any man of his home because of what was at worst an oversight, and I have no doubt a common one, in the hectic days of the early settlement of this state. Therefore, it is the ruling of this court that the case against the defendant, Lawrence Bledsoe, be dismissed. Larry, come here. Yes, sir. One thing more. I'll hold you in contempt if you ever raise anything on the raft to be but white-faced cattle. <laughs> <laughs> A story like tonight's Point of Law makes me realize in a simple way that this country of ours is a wonderful land. Yes, for millions of families settled in big cities and in small towns or spread out across the plains and prairies, this land is our home. Maybe you look at your family as just a little group, just a little group of, well, little people. But it's an important group to you, and it's an important part of the nation, too. Because out of the homes of today from families in all parts of the country will come the leaders of tomorrow, your sons and your daughters. Family prayer will help keep your family happy and well and together in understanding and affection. You'll discover what so many families have always known, a very simple fact. A family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank McDonald Carey for his performance as Larry and Harry Davenport for his portrayal of Ju Judge Claypool. A special word of thanks also to Jack Mitchell for writing tonight's play and to Max Turr for his music. Mel Williamson directed and John Ryder produced the program. Others who appeared in tonight's play were John Faustini, Joe Duval, Charlie Seal, Ken Harvey, Ray Millette, and Lou Merrill. Next week, our family theater star will be William Lundigan. And your host will be Jimmy Gleason. This is Cesar Romero saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries. This program is heard overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Services. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>